are a fleet of shipping vessels attempting to gather fish in an icy storm. However, you're trying to also avoid having to pay a debt to Davy Jones himself, uh, meaning that if you fail, you might end up in the depths below. It's a one to four player game that takes about 30 minutes to play and is for ages eight and up by Eagle Griffin Games. And this is a roll and write game, meaning you're going to be rolling dice, writing down your results on a piece of paper, and eventually after 10 rounds, you'll score all of your fish and your buildings and get a certain number of points and whoever has the most points is the winner. Your objective is to gather as many fishing boats and licenses as you possibly can as well as attempting to gather certain buildings and bonus rewards, earning coins that will give you specific abilities to choose what you'd like to gather while fishing and trying to gather these fish in each of the boats that you own. The game plays like I said 10 rounds and every single round you go throughout the phases. First you will be attempting to gather boats as well as licenses, then you're going to potentially fish on every even round and then you are going to go to the town you're going to roll the town die and you're going to then gather specific town locations or dock locations that will give you inevitably more points we'll talk about the expansion as well in my review and how that's basically covered but for the most part you go through each of these rounds up to 10 times and then whoever has the most points by gathering the fish and other accessories that you need while fishing out there in the storm will be the winner of the game fleet the dice game an exciting roll and write for up to four players but like I said there is a solo mode as well. For those of you who have not played a roll and write game before, these type of games usually require a piece of paper or papers, a pencil and dice. However, these could also be simply whiteboards and uh, markers that you can use to erase them. But in this one here, we're going to have paper and all of these are the same, uh, and, but there are two separate ones. And when you deal out these, you'll give them each to each player that is playing with up to four players. Uh, you're also then going to go ahead and choose the number of die based on the number of players. And in a two player game, you'll have three of these guys here these are your boat dice and so you'll get rid of these uh, two plus uh, two plus one so the number of players plus one and then for this phase here which is going to be the town phase it's going to be also two plus one but the one is going to be one of these boat dice and then you're going to go ahead and start marking your paper now the rest of the stuff here is expansion content this is the icy waters expansion which will come with the fishing village it'll come with a unique specific set of uh, captains that you can choose from and some trophies or a objectives you can get at the end of the game. Uh, and to begin the game, you're going to simply go ahead and uh, roll these dice each, one for one player and one for the other. And then you're going to go ahead and mark down on your piece of paper after you've chosen one of these. So the first player will go ahead and choose this, second player will choose this one. And they're going to mark down up to the boat on the specific roll they made. So when you're using these dice here, for the most part, you're going to be marking in these five different areas here, uh, which is going to be the swordfish, oyster, lobster, cod, and shrimp. However, there is a bonus side here, which is going to be three coins. Whenever you mark coins, it'll be in this area here. After you've gone ahead and set up, it's basically pretty simple, rolling these two die, for, one for each player basically, selecting one of these and then marking down to the boat. You'll mark each of these boxes individually. Whenever you mark a square box, nothing happens, but when you mark a circle, you gain something. When you gain a license, you're always going to gain the next in the row. So the first license will get you this one, the second will get you this one, and the third will get you this one. And these are not cumulative. When you get this one, this is the only one you use. When you get these two, this is the only one you use. And when you get all three of these, this is the only one you use. And that goes for all of these licenses, which are all corresponding to the different types of fish and or fishing boats slash licenses areas here. Uh, this one over here is going to be the oysters. So they would mark all the way down to here. After you've gone ahead and chose your license, then you're going to gather your boat. So in this case here, he's placed his three marks here, he's gained his license, and then he's going to go ahead and gain his first boat. And this is the boat for the shrimp. If you're doing an oyster, this would be the first boat for the oyster. And this one here is going to be the first license. And then you're ready to go. You're going to go ahead and mark the rounds off as you play them. It will have a total of 10 rounds in the game. And then they're going to go to the next phase and the next and the next and the next. And as you see in the first round, there's no fish in the fishing area here, which means that you're not going to fish on the first, third, fourth, or uh, first, third, fifth or seventh round, or even the ninth, because you're only going to be fishing on even rounds throughout this game. To begin now, the players are going to give the hand the die to the first player, which is going to have this little marker here. So we'll just go ahead and say that he is the first player. Uh, the other player is somewhere off to the side, and he's going to roll these die. Then he or she is going to go ahead and select one of these. 
if he or she chooses to take uh, the swordfish here, he will mark a one area on this little swordfish, and you're going to go from top to bottom. So he'd mark that space there. The next player would go ahead and choose one of these die here, and they would mark their oyster. So if that second player's first oyster gave them that boat, then the next one is going to mark down this next location over here. The remaining is actually interesting. In this case here, both players will gain this. This is a community pool. Whatever die is left over, everybody else will get to utilize. So in which case, the players would mark down three coins in this area here. Whenever they fill in a star, they can mark anything on any of their boards as long as it follows the basic rules of top to bottom, uh, left to right. So in this case here, if I had uh, the boat and I wanted to, and I gained a star here, I could then fill in the next area here. I couldn't go all the way down here and fill this one in. Then after that, the uh, boat round, the first round of boating is over and you're gonna move to income. Income's very easy. It tells you down here what you get. You're gonna get one coin. So you'd mark off one coin in this area here. You're also then going to gain any lobster bonuses, which if you have this license here, it'll give you plus one to your income phase. And then you can gain even more from these areas here, this little wharf area here. This one says you get plus one income per full boat that you currently own. Then after your income phase is over, everybody do, does that, you'll move on to the fishing phase if there is one. Now, I'll explain fishing anyway, just so you get an idea of how it works. But when you fish, every boat that you own, basically one that has uh, the little bee circled next to it because you've gathered the boat from one of these locations with a bee on it, uh, you're going to fill in one fish in each of the boats. The only difference is the oysters. The oysters will actually let you fill in two fish per boat or one fish and you can gain one coin. The choice is yours, but otherwise that's basically how fishing works. You'll fill in each of the fish indicated from the left to the right spaces, um, one at a time for each fishing phase, unless a ability tells you otherwise. And the final thing you do is the town phase. You'll set aside these boat dice. You'll roll these die here, two plus the number of players. And in this case, you're going to have one of these guys. And then the first player will select one of these. So if the first player wants this, the next player wants this, then this player will go ahead and head over to, and you can look here and it shows you the symbols, the wharf. And then they have to, just as always, top to bottom. If it's a square, it means nothing, but the next time you utilize it on a circle, you're gonna gain an ability. At the end of the game, you'll score victory points if you, if you completely control this area by having all of the little spaces filled in. And you'll also gain some unique ability whenever you fill these circles in. So for instance, Ama's Bank, that's gonna score you two victory points for each one of these filled in. And if there was a victory point space underneath it, like in this case here, if you had the whole thing, you would actually get bonus victory points. And each of these has different abilities you're going to gain throughout the game, whether they're passive or active, as well as the ability to gain victory points. Uh, you might roll the market. That's another die you can roll. Uh, and if you do that, you can take choose to take this die here. And based on the number of fish you have is going to give you a certain number of coins. And then of course, there's also the anchor. The anchor is the harbor. You can either choose to uh, gather king crab boats, which functions very, very similar to this over here. You could go ahead and head over to the captain's club, which will allow you to fish even when there is no fishing round available. Fishing, uh, fishing vessels will give you filled ships as well as victory points. The barge will let you fill in fish in here when these spaces run out, because when you fish and your boat's already filled, you can't fill in anymore. But you can come over here and fill it in the barge if you happen to have this. And then there's some Inuits that will let you score points when fishing. This doesn't give you point. This doesn't give you fish when you're fishing, only if the other boats are filled. And otherwise, that's pretty much much it. After the players have selected their die and taken theirs, the one in the middle here is going to be once again a community pool. In this case here, we just fill in three more spaces on that coin area. You're then going to set the dice aside. You're then going to pass the marker clockwise to the next player, and you're going to fill in the next bubble for the next round. You'll go to the boating phase, you'll roll, you'll choose, you'll fill in, you'll collect your income, then you're going to go ahead and go fishing, filling in all your ships with fish one at a time, and then you're going to head to the town phase. You'll roll these guys here, select them one at a time, fill in any of these three areas here that you roll based on what you get, and then rinse and repeat up to 10 times. At the end of the game, you're going to score, and over here it tells you how you score. You'll get one point for every fish you have. Well, uh, boats will give you a certain number of points, and it'll tell you down below each boat. Licenses, if you gather all three, will give you a certain number of points. Uh, buildings are going to score you points, like I said before, if you fill in all the build, all, all the spaces of a building. Uh, bonuses, whether it be gathering the king crab, the king crab license, which will score you five victory points, plus you'll get some passive bonus, whether it be something like you'll get two points per active building you have controlled at the end of the game. And then you'll total all these scores, and whoever has the most points is the winner. 
Uh, another thing to note too is if you gather a die that you do not want, you can in fact turn it into a coin instead which is nice. Uh, so it's something like if it's you have no other option or it's completely useless to you. So if you gathered this here, but you had all these filled in, this is pointless for you. But instead you can turn it in and you'll gain a coin for it. With the expansion here, the icy waters or dicey waters, you can instead fill in one of these just like you would fill in the wharf here. But you have to get rid of a die in order to do so. It will not work with one of these stars here. And the other two things, uh, you have these little captains here. Instead of rolling die at the beginning of the game and choosing which one you want and then selecting the three spaces presented on the die that you gathered, you can choose to gather a captain. Instead, you'll shuffle and pick one. Uh, you start with three swordfish checks. So it's as though you rolled a, a swordfish and gathered those three at the beginning of the game, just as a starting. Uh, but you'll just be taking this card here. But it also gives you bonuses for completing the Ridgeback Cannon Company, and you get plus one victory point included per swordfish boat you have at the end of the game. So just a little bit of extra involved in the game. And then there's also trophies. You can shuffle these up and deal them out based on the number of players, uh, and they'll give you victory points. You get five points if you're the first person to complete five buildings, or you're going to get five points for the most buildings controlled by the end of the game. And that's it. That's the Dicey one. Waters expansion. This is Fleet the Dice game. Fully explained to you. You should know how to play by now. I don't think I really missed anything other than just telling you exactly what every little thing does, which I'll kind of brief, briefly talk about above in my review of the game, and then you'll decide whether or not you want to pick this one up or not. Unlike the game Yahtzee, which most of you people have probably played before, this game actually involves rolling the dice and uh, working together in a certain way to gather the die that you need based on a pool that is formed in the game. You roll the die, choose the die you want. If you're the first player and then it'll go clockwise players will select die up until the point where the last player gets to choose between two of them but they get to decide what goes in the pool and what they get to keep uh, because the pool is given to everybody and watching what players are attempting to gather is very important in the game checking to see their sheets are you can play it one of two ways really the house rule of mine is you can simply not look at what everybody else is doing on their little on their little pieces of paper there thusly focusing on your own strategy or you can go ahead and play very cutthroat check to see what everybody is going for and prevent them from gathering the dice they need in order to succeed based on what, what their captain's club license might be or what types of boats they're trying to gather or what fishing boats are filled with fish and which ones are not on their board and what they need to gather uh, and either either way is perfectly fine with this game uh, you're also going to have two separate sets of dice right the boat die and the town die boat is what's going to allow you to gather the different boats and licenses which will allow you to fish with them and the town will let you either go to the wharf or to the uh, town area or the, the, the harbor area or the market which will basically let you either gather coins gather passives and actives or simply try and fish more for more fish and better results at scoring points at the end of the game uh, there's a ton of different options in this game uh, when you look at this game originally it looks very daunting because there's you're not only normally in a normal roll and write you're just going to simply have one of these pieces of paper and you're just going to fill things in at the end of 10 or 5 or whatever rounds you'll score uh, in this one here there's two separate phases and each phase uses a separate piece of paper but what they do excellently in this game is they provide this bottom area here so you're going to fill in each round what each round's phase is and then whether or not you fish or not and then of course it has a nice scoring sheet down here as well which is so easy it's easy it makes it easy to explain the game it makes it easy to show what you're going to do next it even has a little statement of how you gather income and what bonuses you gather because there's a lot of different passive and active th things in this game that you'll have to keep track of and there's, like I said, there is a lot. So for those of you that don't like to have to look back and forth, this does a nice job of making it so you don't have to do that so much. Now, there are certain things like licenses that will score you bonus points or more coins. After fishing, if you fish, you get a star, which means you can fill in a box somewhere. You have to remember to utilize that and you have to like check back. Do I have that swordfish license this game? If I do, I need to use that after fishing or you're going to miss out. And the way we play is if you miss out, you miss out. You forgot to do it. Um, the income phase, you get an extra coin or two or even up to three coins when either gathering, gathering with lobsters. Your oyster boats fill up with more fish, gathering you more points. And uh, they also will give you coins too if you do not have any space for the fish, which is great. And then the shrimp die will not only let you change that die. If you have that specific license, you can change the shrimp to be whatever die you want it to be. But it'll also eventually start giving you stars. And stars are very important. 
Coins in this game are also extremely important. And if there's no trophy or special unique expansion piece that adds to their value, what they do is provide stars. And stars are going to allow you to fill in spaces you want. It's basically like getting a free die of a certain type uh, instantly. And that's highly beneficial. And it lets you do that a ton of times, especially at the beginning of the game. There's a ton of stars that you're going to be filling in and going and choosing your different directions and setting up this cascading effect. If you want to fish a whole bunch of times, maybe before you start fishing, you should acquire something that's going to give you a benefit for fishing on top of just the normal abilities, because there's a ton of different uh, passive actions you can utilize that will score you points in that way. Or uh, maybe you want to launch a lot of boats to get free passive, uh, passive fish when the fishing phases come. Perhaps you should gather a specific license that says whenever you launch a boat you're going to be able to gain more coins which will then in turn give you star power to allow you to then fish more for instance by clicking on that wharf button there. Um, the expansion brings a lot of quality as well. Generally speaking, when you have that leftover die and you don't need it, which normally doesn't happen, and I would never suggest you actually specifically use a die as a coin, uh, there's also a passive ability, a passive building that lets you get two coins instead of just one on a die, which, you know, is almost a star. Usually about three coins equals a star in this game, depending how far you get on the track. But with a fishing village, which is rather nice, uh, you can actually use this instead. It lets you fill in more buildings. It gives you benefits. It functions just like the wharf does, but it's somewhat unique in the fact that there's different uh, spaces that will give you stars. There's different ones that will let you score uh, coins, trade, trade in coins for fish, uh, take a personal fishing phase, etc., etc. Uh, it's just a nice way of not having to utilize that one not very fun aspect of the game, which is not being able to do anything and instead just gaining a coin, which may net you nothing uh, up until later on. Uh, the trophies are fun as well. If you want to play with the trophies, they're basically going to give you a unique objectives to fight for at the end of the game because point totals are rather close in pretty much all roll and rights. This kind of pushes all players to specific uh, objectives, which is nice. You can also, of course, make them uh, hidden special objectives as well. You can shuffle them out and deal them out to other players if, if you so choose. Uh, the captains let you ha ignore having to pick dice at the beginning of the game. You just simply shuffle these out and deal them to a player and then they're going to have their own starting sets you don't have to go ahead and uh, you know, pick and choose randomly i think i like the captains more than i like the basic setup of the original game but i don't think it makes a huge amount of difference either way it just provides a little bit extra the quality of the components is high uh, all the pieces are very very nice the dice are etched and beautiful and colored you have the uh, first player marker which is also nice and the uh, little uh, what is it, solo player tokens you'll use all the cards are thick and there's a ton of, of a ton of variety of, of these things here you're going to have a ton of games here if you want you can of course reprint them out or if you get the expansion it'll come with additional pieces of paper that you can use for the roll and write uh, a, a ton of fun. Uh, this game is a little cutthroat because yes, people are going to take the things that you want sometimes and you have to deal with the fact that you might not always get what you want or you might have to give everybody what you want and so maybe people are going to specifically go for the same strategy you do and you have to kind of counterbalance that you have to find the combos involved in the game if you do not find combos and you simply go for what you want you will trail behind uh, you could have anywhere from up to like a 20 point spread in this game but generally speaking it's pretty close artwork is great uh, the game feels very nice i i used to really dislike roll and rights it took me a while to even want to review them if i'm being quite honest because i found them quite boring uh and slowly i've been seeing new roll and rights that have come out um or playing ones that i haven't played before and i'm finding a lot of joy in them and this one specifically because it has a theme very close to my heart i really love fishing i own many many fishing poles and I simply like to go out uh, to in the ocean on the boat, or I like to go out uh, to the different lakes around here and fish. This kind of gives me a little nostalgia from that. So any game that has fish or fishing involved in it in some way usually gives me points up, just so that you're aware of this fact. But regardless, I do think this is a very solid roll and write game. If you like roll and write games, if you like games that involve a, a solo style for roll and write games, this is one I would suggest you take a look at. Everything is about it is very nice. All the components and artwork and and it just plays really really fun it plays really really well and it is fun uh as long as you might run a little bit of cutthroat and of course the sharing of the dice it's not a solo kind of solitaire style game i think you're really really going to dig fleet the dice game i really highly suggest this one uh it, it, it almost gets a seal of approval uh but it's still a roll and write and i haven't actually managed to pull one out yet for roll and write but this one would be really close just because of that fishing theme regardless though let me know what you think down below in the comment section i really really think that you guys are going to enjoy this one 
if you've played this one before, let me know what you think about it. Have you managed to find any unique tricks or combos in the game? I still haven't. I'm terrible at these games. I've just grown to start liking them more. Uh, but I'm actually curious to hear what you have to say. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and hit the outro now. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Fleet the Dice Game, uh, the one to four player game of rolling and writing. If you like this game, like I said before, there's a link down below in the description. Go ahead and click that down there, see what it's all about. You can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe bell and that notification button there. It does greatly help us out. We do greatly appreciate it. My wife's game, Moonshell, a mermaid game coming March 2nd. If you're interested in going ahead and checking that out, there's a link down below to the Kickstarter pre-launch where you can get notified to see what the game's all about. It's a puzzle game that involves you rotating a board, pulling shells from one location to another to eventually putting them onto your own treasure chest and then you'll have to make certain combinations and score objectives, personal and uh, public objectives, as well as utilizing specific mermaid abilities and mermeeples, moving them around, rotating the board and changing it. Games like Sagrada and Tiny Towns are similar in nature as far as puzzling goes. And for those of you who like the more uh, handheld phone type games, Tetris and Candy Crush kind of uh, fit the mold of this game. You put a lot of time and effort into it and I think it's brilliant and beautiful. I'm excited to get you guys to take a look at it. Of course, I'm, I am probably biased, but regardless, Regardless, let me know what you think. Also, go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We put out a bunch of stuff. Thank you so much to our Patreons. Most of you guys should be getting your goodie bags by now or already have them. There's a painting contest on our Discord. If you've got your miniature, you can go ahead and start painting and post up your paint uh, miniature when you're done. I sent out a bunch of miniatures to you guys. Hopefully you all got them. And if you didn't, you can let me know on Discord and I'll make sure you get them. Uh, we do a bunch of great stuff like that. And also stuff on our live stream as well. We give away games on our live stream every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST. We play games just like this one down below every single Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Rain or Shine, unless I happen to get a virus which I did, but otherwise for the last three years we've been doing it. And I thank you guys so much, Patreons. I am greatly appreciative for you guys. I look forward to fishing with you in the next video.